six. One and two. Love is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble.
God made promises to His children thousands of years ago. He made promises to you. God said that He predestined you and foreknew you while you were still being formed in the innermost parts of your mother's womb. God said that He has plans to prosper you, plans to give you a future. God said that nothing can ever separate you from His love, not the past, not the present, nor that which is to come. God said that He promised to never leave you or forsake you. God said that He is always ready to take your burdens upon Himself and give you peace. God said that He guarantees forgiveness of sin. God said that He loved you so much, He gave His only Son as a sacrifice for you. So the next time you're wondering what you have to be thankful for, stop and think about what God has done for you. And give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Good morning, Rock friends. We're so happy to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to The Rock. Give me a moment. I'm going to look to see who has already joined us. <gasps> Hi, Hi, Rock friends. I see your names popping them already in the chat. So happy to see you. We're so happy to see you. Are you happy to see us? We have a wonderful, exciting service planned for you to this morning. We know you're going to enjoy it. We love you. We thank you. And we want to worship with you. Welcome to The Rock Children's Church. All right. Let's have fun. Guess what time it is? Do you know? It's time to connect to God together by singing and moving to music. Even though sometimes I may not feel like dancing or singing, it's not about how I feel. God deserves all of our worship all the time. He deserves our best. He deserves all of our thanks. So get up and let's connect to God together.
Today's lesson comes from the Bible, God's Holy Word. Make sure you have your BFF, which is your Bible, your friends, and your finances, which is your offering. Don't forget to like the video because we worked hard on it. Hey Alyssa, guess what time it is? It's time to give our tithes and offerings. Are you ready to give back to God? Always. And while we do that, I wanted to answer this tough question we got from our friend Colin. He writes, This is kind of hard to ask, but what if I don't have much money to give to God? I'm so glad you asked, Colin. Sometimes it can feel like we don't have much to give God. But, you know, God doesn't care if your gift is small. He just cares about our hearts when we give. He loves a good attitude. He wants us to obey Him by giving a tithe, so we give 10% of our money to God first, even if it's a small amount. It might seem like God would only be happy if you're giving a gigantic stack of money. The Bible talks about a woman who didn't have much money, but still gave an offering. God saw how much it cost her to give that little bit. He was impressed by her giving heart, not by the amount of what she gave. Even when you give a small gift, God can use it to make a big difference. God knows our hearts and loves to see us giving and being obedient. Thanks for that awesome question, Colin. And thanks for giving. Because giving is a great way to share, share what, what you, you have and, and put God, God first. first. Hi everyone, Luke here. And I'm Ray. And who are you? Mm. Come on, shout your name. Whoa! <laughs> you hear that one from space. I hope they are just as excited to rehearse, rehearse the, the verse. verse. Today's verse is found in the book of Luke. Chapter 4, verse 8. Say it like this. Luke 4, 8. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. All right, you guys got that? Yep. All right, so now I'm gonna say it, and then you guys repeat after me. We got this. All right, Luke 4, 8. Luke 4, 8. Worship the Lord your God. Worship the Lord your God. And serve him only. And serve him only. But Captain, I'm confused. Why this verse? I mean, we've never had any problems worshiping anything other than God. You haven't been in the hub for a while, have you? What did Mike do? Yeah, run faster, strut way harder, less radiation poisoning, less. So how long has he been doing that? Next cause to children under the age of five. About a day and a half. GMO. He actually had him on his hands and was walking around like that for a while. Everything, every inch of my body. It's actually kind of amazing. Better, faster, stronger. We should go talk to him. Yeah, I thought that. But with him doing this kind of stuff instead of his normal shenanigans, we've been getting a lot done. Mike, can you stop doing whatever it is you're doing and talk to us for a little bit? Mike! Oh, hi! How can I help you guys spread the word of God to children all over the world? Wow, you're being very odd today. Odd? 
or Aesthetica's life has reached its peak, I present to you the Quad Ion Powered Mercury 6000 Dynamo Super Kickers versus 5.8 with less radiation and genetic damage. It's great. And they're cool shoes, but uh, I can see here that you have not done your station duties in a day and a half. Of course. That's when I got the shoes. What's that? Shoes? They have spoken to me and my heart has heard. I must do what they say. Huh. Now I am one with the shoes. What did you just do? I permamodded myself with the shoes using Eternaglue, the permanent solution. <laughs> now my shoes can never be apart. We're legally married in three states. <laughs> I'm sorry, now me and my shoes have majestic awesomeness to excellence. <clears throat> uh. <clears throat> Aww. It seems the floor is hugging my feet because it doesn't want my shoes to leave. I'm sorry, floor, but me and my shoes must depart. <gasps> hey, Mike. Hey! What? Well, you've glued your feet to the floor. Okay, so I've trained a lot on how to keep this station safe but I have never prepared for a crew member to glue his feet into his shoes and for those shoes to be glued to the ground. Ooh. Try it again. Okay. One more. <laughs> One more time. Why are you still so happy? Because shoes. Okay, you know you can't stand here forever though, okay? You have to work on the hyperdrive motivator. Right, okay, let me get my tools. Okay, I can't move. Mike, <laughs> when are you gonna fix the telecom link? I'll get on that right now, let me. <clears throat> <clears throat> right, I can't move my feet. Mike, if you don't fix it, we won't be able to broadcast. The reason we're here. Oh yeah, it takes a little bit for his brain to kick in. One more second. Oh no! Oh, if I don't figure out a way to move soon, the station won't function properly, and then the kids won't be able to hear about Jesus! Mike, your love for those shoes has blinded you into making bad decisions. Yeah, it's become idolatry. I do not have a problem with idolatry! Oh uh, yeah? Remember Crazy O Brothers? Look at this! My eyes! My eyes! What's going on? You're the becoming what you worship! You're turning into the Crazy O Brothers! Ah, uh, you look ridiculous. Ah! Ah! This is different! I love these shoes way more than I love that game! The Israelites sinned by committing idolatry when they lost focus on God. Let's just hope Mike learns a lot quicker than they did. This is a 66 pick mixed up into one. The book's about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's alive, applies the heart in your heart and in your mind. Old Testaments are set up for the big event. When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement. It's history, his story, whose story, God's story. Let us know up all the pages that this show gone on. Let us world explode from this video into your life. After God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, God invited Moses to join him on top of a nearby mountain so they could talk. So Moses left and went to talk to God. The Israelites waited and waited until they felt like they had waited long enough. They found Moses' brother Aaron and said they were tired of waiting for Moses, and they were tired of waiting for God. They told Aaron to make them new gods. So Aaron asked them to take off their gold jewelry and give it to him. 
Aaron melted down the gold and made a golden idol that looked like a calf. Aaron presented the idol to the Israelites and told them to worship it instead of God. The Israelites offered their sacrifices to their new gods because they were tired of waiting for Moses and they were tired of waiting for God. Meanwhile, up on the mountain, the Lord was giving instructions on how to live. But He knew what was happening down below. God told Moses, Go down to the Israelites. They have forgotten that I brought them out of Egypt. They are worshiping an idol made in the shape of a calf. The Lord was angry and wanted to punish the Israelites, but Moses stood up for them. Please, don't be angry. They are making a bad choice. Let me talk to them. So the Lord sent Moses down the mountain with all of the instructions they had talked about written on two stone tablets. When Moses saw them worshiping the idol, he was so angry he threw down the stone tablets and found his brother Aaron. Aaron, why did you make this idol for these people to worship? Aaron told him that they were tired of waiting for Moses, and they were tired of waiting for God, so they made their own gods. Moses took the calf idol that Aaron had made and melted it in a fire. Then he reminded the Israelites, It wasn't a calf that brought you out of Egypt. It was God. He is the only one that deserves your worship. Moses went back to the mountaintop to ask God to forgive them for their foolish worship. Idolatry is anytime we love something more than God. It can be anything, friends, games, TV, toys. For you, these shoes became idols the moment they kept you from doing something that God wanted you to do. It's no use. You're stuck. You guys are overreacting. There is a way for me to love my shoes more than life itself and fulfill my purpose here on the station. Uh, Little help. Mike's idolatry could soon hurt the station's ability to broadcast its message to all of you. Perhaps he will make better decisions after he discovers today's point. Say it with me in three, two, one. I'll worship God only. Very good. Hopefully Mike gets this soon. No. Mike, you don't have a choice. The solvent will break up the glue on your shoes. Yeah, but it'll also destroy my shoes. Yeah, but it's powerful enough to break down the glue and your feet will still be safe. <sighs> Yeah, Mike, we have to be able to depend on you to do your job. And you can't like this. I can find a way to do anything. Oh, really? Try touching that wall. <sighs> mm -hmm. Try turning that dial. <sighs> and here's one you may not have thought of. Try going to the bathroom. What are you doing? Give me a minute. Ew, Mike, that's disgusting! Stop it! Yeah, man, and there's also a really important thing that you cannot do. Oh, you're right! This is just so hard! I can't even go to the room, and I love the room! Well, would you like me to go for you? Yeah. Okay. To the room. Hey, room. Hello, Luke. How may I help you? Well, you see, Mike got these new pair of shoes, and he really loves them, but so much, in fact, that he glued his feet into them, and now his feet are glued to the ground, and he can't get any work done around the station. It sounds like Mike has made his shoes into a false idol. Yeah, he did. Hey, room, could you show me today's verse? Luke 4, 8. Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. You know, the Israelites had the same problem and it got them into a lot of trouble. Their sin made God very angry. Why do you think it's so easy for people to fall into idolatry? Well, I mean, it's okay to enjoy things, but it's not okay to enjoy them so much that you lose your focus on God. If you are unsure if something has become an idol in your life, just ask yourself, how do I spend most of my time? 
What do I care about most? What do I talk about the most? If the answer to any of these is something other than God, you've got idols in your life. You're right, Rome. I'll remember that, and I'll help Mike with that too, and I'll remind myself I'll worship God only. <laughs> That's it! That's the point! I'll worship God only! Thanks, Rune. You're very welcome, Luke. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. Hey, Mike, how you doing, buddy? You were right. I love these shoes too much. I can't serve God. I can't do my duties on Connect Station. I can't even go to the room. Well, I'm glad you figured that out. But what changed? Well, I was really sad about having to destroy these shoes. But then I realized it'd be even sadder if I destroyed my relationship with God. Hey man, I, I understand. Getting cool stuff is fun, but I think you just took it a little too far this time. Yeah. They're just shoes, and they don't deserve my worship. From now on, I'll worship God only. Hey, that's the point. I get that's the point of what you're trying to say, but I'm not sure what you're getting at, so maybe if you, you know, tell me today's point, then I'll understand. I'll worship God only. Mike, that is today's point. Well, I get that today's point of like everything that we're doing was to, you know, for me to understand that I'll worship God only, but I need you to tell me exactly what the real That was exhausting. Well, did everything work out okay? Yeah, it was hard for Mike at first, but he found the point. What's the point? What's the phrase the room teaches us to learn God's truth? <laughs> no, silly. I meant what was the point today? Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. It's, it's been a long day. Will you say it with us? I'll, I'll worship, worship God, God only. only. Well, while we're at it, let's say the verse too. Mm -hmm. Luke, Luke 4, 4 8. 8. Worship the, the Lord your God, God and serve, serve Him only. only. Great job. Mm -hmm. You know, that verse and that point are great reminders to worship God with all your heart. Show how much you love Him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once you finally got those shoes off Mike's feet, were his feet okay? Yeah, they were. But now he's saying that he's never going to wear shoes again. And the smell, Captain. Ew. It's unbearable. Wow, I cannot believe that I let something like shoes distract me from my relationship with God. You could say that I let what's on my feet become more important than what's in my heart, but no more. I'll worship God only. But you know, that just reminds me of how much God loves me because he always forgives me and welcomes me back with open arms every time I ask for forgiveness because I made him the leader of my life. And if you want to worship God only, you can today. Just remember your A, B, C's. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. And if you want to choose Jesus, please, let us know. That is good news, Rock friends. And we no longer have to be bound by the devil, but we can be free in Christ Jesus. Who's excited about that? I am. I'm so excited. And you know what? Becoming a child of God is so easy. You know what? All you have to do is say a sincere prayer, mean it from your heart, and believe it. Okay, so I'm going to lead you. I just want you to follow me, all right? Are you ready? Let's pray together. Say, Dear God, I admit that I have sinned, which makes me a sinner. I now believe 
that Jesus Christ came and he died and he was raised to life for my sins, for the sins that I committed. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord. And that means no longer making decisions for myself, but asking him, what should I do with the life I've made? And you say, amen. Can you do that? Great job, Rock Friends. Let us know that you've made that decision. Reverend Moshe is going to tell you how you can, can connect with us and share that decision you've made. Rock Friends, if you made that decision, we are so excited and we're celebrating your new life. You are a brand new Christian and we are so grateful and so honored that you've made that choice. Well, if you want to connect with us here at the Fountain of Praise, you can get your adult and they can go to tfop.org and there is a connect tab which will give you information about how you can become a member of the church and there's also a tab if you want special prayer that you can click on and get special prayer so we would love to hear from you and your adult and your parents if you made that decision and so that's how we can connect with you even though we can't connect with you physically right now in service but we can connect with you virtually and so we just celebrate the decision that you've made well rock friends did you enjoy our services today? Miss Lanessa, did you enjoy the services today? I had so much fun. I had so much fun. <laughs> we know that many of you are going back to school. Some of you have already started back school, but we pray that you will be able to go back to school in the rest of the summer, knowing that God loves you, even though you make mistakes, and that you can continue to build your confidence. Well, friends, you know how we like to close out our services. If you're not already standing, we want, want you to stand, place your finger on your forehead, and receive your blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance towards you and give you peace. See you soon.